Today, we got the first guilty plea in connection with the January 6th Capitol riot. It came from a founding member of the group, the Oath Keepers, which is a far-right extremist group. His name is John Schaefer. He's a guitarist and songwriter for the heavy metal band Iced Earth. If you're a fan of that band, I hate to break the news to you. You can see him here on that day wearing a blue jacket and a hat that reads Oath Keepers Lifetime Member. He is the first, the first out of more than 400 people to publicly plea in connection to the riot. His plea includes a requirement for him to cooperate with the government, meaning he could potentially incriminate other members of his far-right militia group. In his plea deal, Schaefer admitted that when he broke through the doors of the west side of the Capitol, he knew that Congress had begun a joint session to certify the election results, and that then-Vice President Mike Pence had announced he did not intend to stop it. Of course, it was Donald Trump who was basically the only person to put pressure on Mike Pence that day to stop it, remember? Trump was the one that stood up in the rally before the insurrection and called out the vice president. I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. I hope so. Because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify. And we become president and you are the happiest people. When Mike Pence did not do that, well, the mob, including the Oath Keeper, charged the Capitol. Retired Lieutenant General Russell Honore led the task force to review security in the wake of the January 6 attacks. And last month, he released a 15-page report on his findings. He, of course, was also the person tasked by George W. Bush more than 15 years ago to lead the response to Hurricane Katrina. And Lieutenant General Russell Honore joins me now. Um, General, first, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what, what your findings were in this review. Yes, Chris, uh, we made uh, about six substantial recommendations, one on intelligence, which we've heard a lot about. The IG and the, uh, of the Capitol Police spoke to that yesterday, but increased staffing, increased process. And by the time we had finished in six weeks, they had increased the intelligence processing, but they need more people, more trained people. And they thing was staffing. We recommended an additional 833 officers. Uh, as it is, the Capitol Police are 233 officers short. We need a recruiting and retention program uh, to fill the 233 that they're short today, plus the additional 800 we recommended that they hire to uh, buy down overtime. They spent $720,000 last year on overtime. They come to about 300 officers that they would need. So these officers that are on duty today are not spending six and seven days a week working 12 hours a day which also affect their training. And we made a big recommendation that they need additional training. Uh, we, we recommend they amend the authorities to allow the Capitol Police Chief in, in emergencies to request assistance from the National Guard and other agencies without having to go through the Sergeant at Arms of the House, the Senate, and the uh, architect of the Capitol. We also uh, authorized procedures for a QRF that QRF would be provided by a quick reaction force, I'm sorry, would be provided by the National Guard. National Guard has done this throughout history. They've been protecting the Capitol since 1840. The National Guard, after 9-11, right. after provided 250 National Guardmen for two years. And we made infrastructure requests, recommendations, as well as an increase in dignitary protection. We needed about 200 officers to provide dignitary protection to the members of Congress. Let me ask about the openness of the Capitol, because I think this is something where there's some there's there, there's folks from across the ideological spectrum, I think, who feel and have felt that, you know, it's you want the Capitol to be secure, but also it's the people's house. And it's a great thing that you can as an American citizen, you just walk up to the Capitol. You can go into the you know, you can go into the Capitol. You can go to your member of Congress's office. You can walk into the receptionist and say, you know, I'm here and these are my concerns. That obviously has all been essentially impossible uh, in the wake of January 6th. Partly that's COVID. But do you say a way, way forward to restoring that some kind of openness so that we can go to the building as American citizens and talk to our representatives? Chris, on both sides of the House uh, and the Senate, uh, all the committees we talked to, over a dozen of them on both sides, both Republicans and Democrats all emphasize that they want the people house to be open to the people. And that area has become yeah. the challenge, Chris. How do we keep the capital open to the public? 
uh, to a, a time when many of them remember coming in the high school days and visiting the Capitol. And at the same time, how do we provide the protection to prevent something from happening uh, that happened on one six, happened 100 days ago? And that is the recommendation we make. We think we can do both. We're a sophisticated nation, but it's going to take the Congress to fund this at a bill right now on the supplementals looking at about $2 billion to fund the recommendations we made. You're someone with obviously a, a celebrated and illustrious career. You've served your country for, for decades. Um, I think many people uh, first became aware of you outside the military when uh, your role in Katrina. I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, th there has been a concerted set of attacks on the right, particularly among conservatives, to paint you as some kind of, you know, lefty activist uh, that you that you're a you know partisan axe grinder uh, that you're you're carrying some banner for one side ideologically or or, or or partisan wise. I'm just curious what your response to that is. Well, I'm not a Republican and I'm a Democrat. <laughs> I'm a no party. Uh, over the years, uh, and uh, I could tell you some war stories about that sometime. The Democrats think I'm a Republican, and the Republicans think I'm a Democrat. Uh, I try to tell the truth, look at the facts, uh, and give the report, and when something needs to be done, make it happen. That's the missions, and that's my reputation in the Army. I want to play a little bit of just um, uh, an interview that we were able to do on NBC News with Lieutenant uh, Rainey Brooks, just about the experience of that day. And I think it speaks to some of your recommendations about being overwhelmed. Uh, as the mob essentially was able to breach the line and 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 enter the Capitol. Take a listen. Probably what sticks with me the most, and there, there were many, but what sticks with me the most is um, inside the Lower West Terrace door. You know, the, the lock got breached, and I don't know, maybe it was 60 or 70 of us trying to just keep them from getting in through the door. And it literally and figuratively, it was forever. I mean, it was just push and pull and fight and I couldn't get that close because at that point I was tackled and they stole my helmet, took my helmet, they tried to get my gas mask. It was all these surreal things like this cannot be happening, this cannot be happening, this, this cannot be happening. That this cannot be happening, I think, was the, the general feeling that day among folks watching and people who were there. Are you confident we can stop it from happening ever again? Absolutely. We, we're confident it, it, it cannot happen again, will not happen again. They may be those that try, uh, but the procedures that were left in place and uh, Chief Pittman and her staff, along with the uh, Capitol Police Board, uh, have the National Guard on hand. They have some temporary fencing up. And oh, by the way, Capitol visitors are still suspended because of COVID. Uh, that COVID... Right. Uh, suspension of the public coming uh, will soon be over. So some of these recommendations we need need to be acted on so the architect of the Capitol yep. can start the contract. We need the supplemental approved, and we need a better retirement system for the Capitol Police to be that equal of the Park Police, because right now the Park Police have a better retirement system than the Capitol Police. So as the D.C. Police. That needs to be fixed when they write this supplemental, Chris. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.